this is Hunt Test Training with Pet Tutor, um, presented by Penny Baker. And the agenda for today, we're going to talk about introduction to hunt test training and competition for those of you that don't know too much about it, um, like myself. Um, we've got the American Kennel Club versus um, the Hunting Retriever Club comparison. Um, issues in training by yourself. We all have issues that we face when we have to train by ourselves. So teaching your dog to go to a blind object, building confidence specifically with the pet tutor. Um, as well as adapting the pet tutor for field trials and hunt tests. Uh, Penny's got some very creative mounting options with the help of her husband um, that she's put together um, throughout the years. Uh, she's also had some custom enhancements from the pet tutor dog and earring team. So we've sent her some stuff in the past to help her train um, and create a product that suits her needs the best. Um, then we'll see how she practices using all of that gear and the final product that we want to receive. Um, and we'll have some videos for you guys. Um, so for those of you that don't know Penny Baker, she has titles in obedience, agility, tracking, and nose work in addition to field work. Uh, she prefers the field venue these days because she loves to be outdoors. Um, she especially loves the process of training um, a dog that was specifically bred for um, field work. Um, she's currently running three dogs, Otto, Zoe, Indy, and she's had a, several past dogs um, with a lot of different titles there. I don't think I could even say what all those titles are. I have absolutely no idea. So that They're just, just letters. Yeah, they look pretty. Um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but no, it's awesome, Penny. Um, so that is a little bit about Penny Baker. Um, she's also got six dogs herself, so I'm thinking that all these dogs might not even be listed here that she has. Um, but that's a little bit about Penny. And Penny, if you want to go ahead and get started, um, maybe you can introduce your dogs here. Sure. Um, <laughs> the one on the left, um, or the way I'm looking at it, the one on the left is Otto. Um, he did not require the pet tutor for his training. <laughs> um, he had lots of drive, a little too much drive. Um, and I, I ran him in both AKC and HRC. Um, he's nine and a half now. I'm not really sure how he got that old, but he did. Um, and so I still train him, but I'm not running him, um, mainly because he's noisy. Um, and if you do any kind of field work or hunting, you know that noisy is not a good thing. <laughs> so, um, I choose not to, uh, ruin other people's tests by running him. Um, but he's fabulous and he loves the work and he's really good at it. He's just a little noisy. I started him older. Um, the, the middle one is Zoe, who's the one that I used um, the pet tutor for. Um, she's not as drivey, um, not as pushy. And um, I just, I needed to get something else into my training. Um, and that's where I looked into uh, using the pet tutor for. She's, um, well, she's five. I had to think about that. And I actually can't, can I get rid of your faces on the, on the right-hand side, Nick? Can I like minimize or something? You should be able to if there, if you maybe click on oh, the. Okay. Yep. There we go. Okay. Perfect. Um, so on the, yeah. So on the right-hand side, that's Otto, um, at, it must've been an HRC test. He's in the back and an apple who happens to be Zoe's mother. Um, so, uh, the puppy that I'm training right now isn't, isn't in here. I think she's photobombed a couple of the other shots throughout the presentation. I was going to um, say, I think there's an adorable little puppy coming up soon. So. Yeah, it's, it's the wrong color. It's chocolate, but <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So... Um, and there's another slide where it talks about this, right, Nick? The AKC comparison, all of that. Um, yeah. yeah, that one. Yeah. Yeah. Can you go back to the other one for just a minute? And Definitely. Just, might get my head in the right place. Okay. Okay. So um, go, go, go ahead to the next one. Um, I... Do not run in field trials. So if you, if you are familiar with hunt tests, um, you'll know that the difference between field trial and hunt tests is 
radically different. Um, when I first started doing hunt tests 30 years ago, um, they were called field trials and that was what they were. But as people, like with anything, people got more more better and professionals came in. So they, they always try to up the ante. So the field trials are um, huge. The skill set is huge. The distance they have to run is huge, like 300, 400 yards. Um, just really huge. It's, it's, and it's dog against dog, um, which is not how hunt tests work. So field trials, you know, somebody wins in the end and, 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 somebody loses. Um, for hunt tests, uh, both AKC and um, HRC, which is the UKC version of it, um, it's just dog doing the work and does the dog get the work done. Um, so um, that's what I'm currently running. Um, and they have many different levels of that. But um, that's what I run. I run AKC and HRC. Um, I prefer HRC because you get to handle a gun. <laughs> and I, I kind of, I didn't like that at first. And then I, I actually really enjoy it. Um, I also like camo and you have to wear camo. Um, <laughs> it's, it's weird, but for AKC, you don't have to wear camo. Um, HRC is supposed to be more like hunting. So Distances, even within that venue of hunt test, distances are smaller for HRC. Um, they actually don't use, or at least around here, um, we don't use live birds. They use what they call fresh kill birds. Um, AKC um, hunt tests will use what they call a live flyer in, in all levels. Um, it just depends on how many, depending on um, what level that you're at. So. Um, and like anything, AKC and HRC, even just the um, atmosphere is different. So in general, I train for UKC, um, but uh, I do both. So if you can do, if you can train to the highest level on UKC, then you can most likely do at least up to the second levels in, in AKC. Their highest level is, is pretty challenging. So. Um, but that's, that's the basic difference. You might've seen, there's been a lot of um, YouTube vid videos recently or like within the last year of people showing um, field trials um, dogs because they're starting to use drones to follow the dogs because the dogs have to run so far, the people that are actually throwing the birds wear white because you can't see them. And so it's, it's very different. And then once they came up with um, drones, now they follow the dogs with drones. It's kind of interesting. Um, that's the basic difference between the two. Um, and then behaviors needed maybe for hunt test training? Sure. So um, there's three different levels. Um, and I'm going to stick with the um, HRC just because that's easiest for me to kind of keep in my head. Um, there's a started, seasoned, and finished level. And um, basic behaviors are at the lowest level. The dog has to go out, get the bird, and bring it back. And they have to um, deliver it to hand. They have to. They can't just. They can't drop it ten feet away and you go get it. They have to bring it to you in your hand. Um, they don't have to be steady, meaning you can hold on to their um, collar. Um, and the distances are. Um, 30 yards, 40 yards, 50 yards, depending on what you're doing. There's always a range. I, I don't remember what they are, but um, they, they have to be within a, within a certain range. <clears throat> and they have to get two birds on the land and two birds on the water. <clears throat> um, so they do that to make sure that the first time the dog went out wasn't just a fluke. They wanna make sure that the dog can go get another bird. Um, and um, works that way both on land on and on water <clears throat> so um just and they call they're doing what they call singles so one bird goes the dog goes out and gets it another bird go, once it comes back then you send it again when the other one goes so it's all very methodical for the most part um there's always judges behind you watching um and um you don't really know well 
if you know what you're doing, you know that whether you've passed or not when you're, when you're done. Um, the next level in, in HRC is called seasoned. <clears throat> and that's where I was getting a little challenged with the yellow lab um, and where I brought the pet tutor in to help me. There's about five different, for lack of a better word, activities or classes that you have to do. Um, there's something called a double where they throw, where they, two birds go down and your dog has to go get one and then remember where the second one was and, and go get that one. There's something called a walk up. So you're moving along with your dog and then something goes into the air and your dog has to go, your, your dog has to stay with you first until you send it and then go get the bird. Um, what was that? Walk up. Uh, there's a distraction. So your birds, your dog's coming back from getting a bird and another one flies up, hopefully not right in front of them, but sometimes they do. Um, and they have to ignore that one, come back with the bird they had, go back out and get that one. Um, and then there's something called, um, a blind. So the blind is where the dog doesn't see the bird go down. Um, you know where it is cause they told you, um, and you have to direct your dog to where the bird is. Um, and that's where I use the pet tutor. That's, that was the big part where I used the pet tutor. And that's, that's a lot of trust for the dog. And that's a lot of confidence for the dog. Um, they, they need both of those things in order to be able to do that skill. And you do those five things on land, and then you do those five things on water. You don't always do the distraction and the walk-up in both places. It's kind of up to the judge. But you, you do them in, in both land and water. So it's pretty, it's pretty involved. Um, and you handle a gun for all of those activities. Um, and you can easily get booted out if you do not handle the gun safely. So it's kind of one more thing to think about while you're, while you're doing stuff. So um, the next level is finished and that's what I'm currently training for with both of the dogs. Um, because if you can train and do finish, that means you can do seasoned, you, you know, you always kind of train for the next level. And that's essentially everything the same, but more. So it's a triple instead of a double. So three birds. Now the dog has to remember where three landed. Um, there's a blind work, but I believe it's two blinds, not one. Um, all done on the water. Also, um, there's distractions, diversions similar activities, just more and harder. Um, so that's my goal <laughs> for, the, for the yellow girl, but I'm, I'm not there yet. Um, what are we on, competition or how, how competition is done? I sort of covered that or unless you yeah, have. I think you covered it pretty well. Yeah, okay. Um, so, for the blind work specifically, for, for, for my training anyway, you know, as most of us who are doing, if you're doing field work and you're doing positive reinforcement field work, um, it's hard to train with a group of people. There's lots of different groups of people training, either with balanced or um, not balanced. Um, there aren't a lot of people doing um, positive reinforcement training, at least not around where I am. And you need equipment. This is not a equipment-free sport. Um, you have to have, you know, it's not like agility. You don't need all of that, but you do need some pieces of equipment. Um, for the blind work specifically, your dog has to go out to something. They have no idea where it is, what it is. Well, they know what it is, but they don't know where it is. They don't know how far it out it is. They just need to go and then they need to listen to you if you need to tell them how to get there. So uh, casting is, is what they call that. And they're hand signals or verbal or both. There's no specifics like there is an obedience about what you can or cannot do um, as far as that goes. Um, but the dog has to go out when you send them and do the work that you're asking them to do. Um, the black lab that I have, Otto, the one on the left, no, he never had a problem with that. He had a problem listening to me, 
but he didn't have a problem leaving me and going out and doing the work. Um, but he was pretty sure he knew it better than I did. Um, <laughs> Zoe is kind of a soft dog um, for certain things. And in this particular exercise, this is where she was soft. So when I'm training with my training partner, when we start to train this activity, we have a person involved and we do what we call a food bowl. And you put food in a bowl and there's kind of other things that happen before then that you start to build into them, but you're sending them to the food bowl. You send them and they get food and then they come back and then you send them again. And you start to build up um, repetitiveness, distance, um, complications, what they call suction, you know, there might be um, something on the side that distracts the dog. There might be one of the um, wingers that was used to, to fling a bird out that's over there. And so they get distracted by that because they can smell ducks over there. So there can be a lot of factors that can distract them. But the biggest issue for this, as far as I'm concerned, that's the hardest one to work through is the confidence and building up the distance. And you really need to build up um, repetition because that's how you can get the distance. Um, and it's hard to do. So when my training partner's not around, the only way I can do that is I put my dog in a stay and I walk out, put food in the bowl, walk back, send the dog. She's more than willing to go. She just saw me go there and put food in the bowl. She's really happy about that. As soon as I started to fade away from that, so maybe just put out bumpers um, instead of food, her motivation went really far down. And it wasn't necessarily because there was no food, but it, that was part of it. You know, you can be not confident, but if you know there's food at the end of the tunnel, you're gonna go anyway because there's food at the end of the tunnel if you're, if you're food driven. Um, and she just, she just wasn't, and I was struggling. And if I, if you don't have that behavior, you, you can't enter at that level. It's useless, you, you know, unless you have $80 to just throw away every time. Um, so I, I needed to think about doing something. I had a um, treat and train, um, which doesn't get the same distance. Um, it also does not work if you've left it out in the rain for a long period of time. <laughs> um, so my trainer was not working and I also knew I couldn't get the distance with it. So that's when I started to look at, at the pet tutor because now I can really train by myself um, and start to get the distance that I needed um, to train. So definitely, I only used it for sending to the blind. Um, there's other activities as part of this exercise, casting, um, to the left, to the right, um, similar to what people might do in agility when they tell their dog to go right, to go over, jump, or go left. Um, so I didn't use pet tutors on right or left or anything like that. Um, I purely used it to build distance. So 20 yards, 30 yards, 40 yards, 50 yards, 60 yards. I'm working on 50, 60 yards right now. Um, and I, it really needs to be like, hundred yards. Um, so I haven't been terribly motivated lately. <laughs> um, but that's what I need to build up to is a hundred yards. Oh. Okay. I'm not sure what's next after that. Yeah. Um, so I think we've got your adaptations as far as um, mounting goes for um, out in the field. It can be a little challenging. Right. So Poor Wes, I almost ended up returning the pet tutor like a week after I bought it <laughs> because I said, I'm not getting the distance that I need to get. And we talked through it and um, he gave me a little thing to try with um, um, the clicker to get a little bit more distance. Um, and that's when we started to realize that, you know, what's, what's around you can sometimes affect this so if you're out working out on a pristine cut lawn you can get a pretty good distance um with the pet tutor um when i when you start working in taller grass which is you know when you're out just in somebody's field using it um 
the distance doesn't work as well because there's things in, in front of it. Um, I need to train the same behaviors on water as I do on land. I didn't want it to sit in the water. Um, and I needed to keep things dry. The goal when your dog goes out, even if they're eating food or just picking up a bumper, is you want them to go out, grab it, come back. You don't, you don't really want to build in a lot of, oh, let me search around and look for food. <laughs> um, so that was some of what I was um, playing around with in, in ways with the pet tutor. So keep it off the ground so that, um, first of all, ants and stuff can't get into it, but also water can't get into it if she's going through the water. It also gives it a bit more clearance. Um, it also makes it so that I can see it <laughs> um, a little bit easier. Um, so, um, sorry, my dogs are barking. Um, I think when we go to some of the other slides, Nick, that will probably show some of that. Yeah. Oh, I didn't touch on the, um, the powered on for longer periods outdoors. <clears throat> I hate, um, batteries. <laughs> and so somebody had mentioned at some point, um, about using one of those portable, um, those little, little units. I don't, is, external, is that what you call uh, battery packs or external? Yeah, yeah, batteries? battery pack. Yeah, so I ended up getting one of those. It never dawned on me that you could even um, do that. And um, when I started using that, that was better also. I didn't have to worry about are the batteries good still um, or anything like that. So that, that actually was helpful, but I did need to make sure that I kept it off of the ground. Definitely. I apologize. I have no idea what my dog is barking at. She's on the other side of the wall. Can you, can you hear it a lot? It's not, it, it's not uh, overpowering your voice, so it's okay. okay. All right. <laughs> um, but we will see in future images here, I think that external battery pack in use, so. Right. Um, here, I think maybe was your first iteration, if you want to talk yeah, about it. Yeah, so, yep, yeah. so there's, it's not here. So this is when I just took what, um, uh, basically the original pieces that I got, right? The pet tutor and the base. And this is just one of those electric fence um, pieces um, that they hang electric fences on. Um, and I hung the pet tutor on that. Um, the white bag was so that the dog could see it when I started to build up distances. Um, and I've got it hanging up as you can see. So, um, and that's mostly so that I can get some distance because the, I call it the receiver, I don't know if that's the right word or not, is at the base as opposed to on the top. So, um, I can't, the other slide is, um, I think it's just a close up of that. Yes, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so the problem I had with this was it would swing. Um, so when she came running up to get the food, it would start to swing. Um, and that would cause a problem because either the cookies would fall out or now she was kind of chasing it around and, and stuff like that. So that was the beginning of my um, re-engineering as my husband likes to call it. <laughs> <laughs> and that swinging motion probably would make a dog that is already fearful even more fearful. It could, yeah, yep. it could. In this case, since there was food in it and she, she was sort of the one making it it swing didn't bother her too much um but it did delay things because now if the food fell out she was fussing around trying to find the food and sure so all right <clears throat> okay so eventually i want her not to be able to see it so the big white bag the big white stick um I want to start to fold that up and kind of fade that out. So um, I am not a seamstress, um, but I, I was motivated enough to go to the store and buy camel cloth and, and make this. And it's just got, I think there's a close up of it someplace else. Just got Velcro on the inside and it's camo on one side and orange on the other. Um, and I use that to start to um, fade out the pet tutor because the dogs can see the blue easily. And then at some point, I think you'll see, I painted the stick black also. 
And this is actually go back to that, Nick. This was one of my new <laughs> re-engineering things. So taking that big base out because that's hard for me to carry into the field. You know, it's easy for me to carry into the backyard. It's not easy for me to carry into the field if I'm going training, you know, outside of my own yard. Um, so my husband came up with this. It's just a little tray from, from like one of the crates. Um, we drilled holes in it so that the water would drain out and it's attached with some industrial screws and washers that my husband did. Um, and that worked okay, but the pet tutor was still swinging, you know, cause it's round on a square thing. So it, it worked out okay, but it still wasn't um, quite how I wanted it. Um, and some of the places where that I train at, the soil is really hard. So I, when, because that um, dish was there, I couldn't use the little thing they have that you can step on to press it into the, into the ground. Mm -hmm. So I, I get very picky, my poor husband. <laughs> so, well, and I think uh, you have to be a little picky in order to be doing what you're doing and competing. Well, I kind of like, like, I know exactly what I want, but I just want him to build it. <laughs> um, so what's the next one, Nick? Um, ah, this is, yeah, there were a couple other iterations in between the, that black tray and this one, but this is the one that's kind of worked out the best. This is one of those collapsible um, silicone um, food dishes. So it, it's collapsible and it has a hinge on it because it's made to go in a crate where you could have it in the crate, flip it down, they could use it, and then you can flip it back up. Um, so that's what I've done on there. It, um, and it actually can't, I don't know if we have a close up, but you can also just take it off. It, it twists and then it will, the dish will come right out. So it's actually pretty easy storage. Everything kind of flips up and almost gets flat. Um, it's lightweight because it's silicone now. I don't have to really worry about breaking anything. Um, I'm trying to see what's on this. So some of the things on here, this is out in an area where I was doing water work. So um, that's why I really needed it to be up here. And there's a couple things here that that you folks built for me. So we've got that red hook on top. Yeah. Um, yep. And that helps it not swing. Um, and not, I don't remember what that orange thing is on the bottom. I think it's uh, probably one of our universal bases, which is actually in this. Oh, well, I'm still. Wes is oh, correcting. That, that orange screw thing that we use. Like, oh. Um, Yes. Um, so that, yep. That was something that's else. That's the thing that because you have a dish that hit, connects into it. In the universal. Base. Yes. Yep. The dish that connects in with the universal base. It's our travelable set in the store. Okay. And then yep. we've got a feeder hook. Is the little hook that you've got up here, which is also available in the store. Okay. Um, and the orange loop. That's the thing that you folks built so to carry the the portable battery pack to hold yep. on to that. Yeah, um, which now we have available in the store as well. <laughs> I, um, I don't remember if, yeah, I think I'm still using the, that orange base. Um, I, I, I believe I am. Um, I, I don't have any cam or anything on this because this is pretty far away. This is on the other side of a, um, um, kind of a, a pond so it's 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 pretty far away and it's pretty hidden um so i needed to see it <laughs> I needed to see where it was um so and then you can see this has the black stick that i very painted very poorly with my spray paint um hey it works yeah yeah <laughs> um yeah so so this is this is it without the external. So some of these pictures are a little backwards. So this was this pack this picture probably came before the one that you just saw, um, because you can see I just have the battery pack sitting on top, um, and I still have my black um, 
bowl at the bottom at the base. So, um, and I have an elastic keeping it from swinging. So this is actually, I messed up on the order for this, Nick, but this would have actually been before the, before the one that we just looked at. Sure. Um, okay. um, yeah. So, but you can kind of see the transition, different things. And yeah. that's the, that's the puppy photobombing. <laughs> um, Here we have an up close photo. Yep. Yeah, yep. Yeah. So there's the, the hook and the battery piece. Um, and then you can see the, the posts that I'm using, those actually have worked out the best. They're pretty cheap. So if you break them, it's not a big deal to replace them. Um, and they have a nice big pointy metal thing at the end that you can really cram into the ground. Cause you know, the pet tutor is pretty heavy, so it needs to be able to carry the weight. Um, so that's what I, that's what I end up, end up using. Um, then here's another close up of the bowl underneath. Yep. Yeah, yep. Yeah. So you can see where that, where that, that's my, here's my husband with all of that stuff. <laughs> so if you take the bowl off, then that whole thing flips up. Um, so it, it stores pretty flat in my truck. Um, you can actually the, kind of see the orange piece a little bit better too. You might've been going there, but um, yeah. so that orange pole mount is not currently in the store. Um, maybe will be in the future, but. Um, right. Yeah. So I am using that. The only difference is um, I, it didn't line up quite the way I wanted it to. Um, so we put tape on it so that when you go to tighten it, it tightens up and is straight the way I want it to be. Sure. Um, yeah. So that's what we did there. And um, my um, re-engineered um, clicker at the bottom there <clears throat> um, <laughs> for, my, for my distance work, so. Um, and then uh, taking it to the field, I think we've got a couple of videos here, Penny. Yeah, do you wanna, do you wanna show them first or do you want me to? You should be able to speak on top of them, I think. I don't know if the audio will come through clearly. Okay. So this is my backyard. This is where I started realizing that I had a problem because this is um, about 60 yards um, and it's a little bit uphill. Um, and as soon as I stopped walking that and dropping food, that's when I started to have my issue. So this, this made a huge difference just getting that. If I couldn't get it in the yard, I wasn't going to get it anyplace else. Um, and you can see this is the original setup here. Um, and Wes wanted to know why she didn't pick up that one. It's because she was busy shopping. There was other bumpers <laughs> on the other side. Um, she liked that one better, I guess. Um, Would the ultimate golden penny be for her to pick up that bumper or does it matter at all? No, it, it depends on how you train and, and who you are. Not all dogs shop. Otto doesn't shop. He just grabs and runs. He doesn't care. She shops. Um, but I trained her retrieve differently. Her, her, and her retrieve, is, her retrieve is very methodical. She has to pick it up a certain way. <laughs> um, so I, I kind of think that's where the shopping is coming from. Um, and when you're training, you tend to put multiples out so that you don't have to keep putting them. If you're, if you're at a test, there's only one bird. So I, I never worry too much about the, the shopping um, because if there's more than one bird out there, somebody's screwed up really bad. So <laughs> so I don't worry about it too much. Then I believe we have another video here. Yep. So this is in one of the places that I go to train. And this is a longer distance after I've gotten more work under her belt. Um, Sorry, the video is not great quality. Um, that's a, about 80 yards, actually, I believe, if I remember correctly. Um, and there's a picture after this that shows the what the pet tutor looks like down there. Um, she does like to make sure she gets every piece of food. Um, I, I did have to be careful about how I was using the clicker and and you guys did let me know if you know if you press it too many times in succession 
then it either shoots out a bunch or then it doesn't do anything. So I've gotten better at um, pressing it, waiting, press it, waiting. Um, and Charlie bears seem to work the best because they don't send out a million different cookies. So most of the time what she's running for is Charlie bears, which is cardboard, <laughs> but they all, they all love it. So I don't get too picky about the food. I'm dragging it out in the field. I don't, I'm not dragging raw food or cheese or anything like that. Yeah. So that's the setup. And this was done, you know, before we started talking more about how to attach things. So you can see, those are all my little um, creativity things to keep it from moving. I put, um, I don't know what those things are, those um, yeah. plastic covered metal, I don't know what they're called. Um, A gear tie. Gear tie, is that what they are? Okay. Um, yeah, so there's a whole bunch of those to keep it from rolling, you know, from moving around um, because I don't have that base or anything like that. Um, and you can see it's up pretty high. So that was problematic because um, when the food drops, sometimes it doesn't always fall into that dish. So, you know, those are kind of things I tried to work through so that the training would go smoothly. The engineer over here, Wes, is keeping me up to date on all my uh, keyword, my vocabulary <laughs> knowledge. The my husband would have known what that was. Yeah. <laughs> Um, here's another video. Okay, so this is where we introduced it into the water, which I was pretty excited about because it's pretty hard to be walking across water to drop food. <laughs> so if you can imagine, normally I had to have somebody on the other side if I wanted to use food over there. Um, so the pet tutor actually ended up helping me a lot more with the water than I realized it would. Um, so that's that's about 35 yards for her and for this particular um, training exercise. And then where she's going to, there are um, bumpers or dokens, probably dokens, and the pet tutor. Um, <clears throat> this is my video of a video, so <laughs> it's not as clear as it would have been. Um, and then, so you can see, so when she's going in, that's what, she, that's what she's seeing. So, so Penny, in a sense, the pet tutor is just replacing that other training partner that you don't have at this time. Yeah. Um, yeah. Okay. Allowing yeah. you to do it solo. Right. Right. Because, you know, we, we train um, once a week together, maybe twice. Um, but, you know, life gets in the way sometimes and doesn't always work that way. And you need to take it on the road and you need to go to a lot of different places. So um, you, you just can't always train. And even when you're training with two people, sometimes that person's doing something else or whatever. So, um, yeah, it's, it's, it's an extension of a person sure. for sure. And then I think we have the final product here. Yeah, so the only the bad thing about this video, you can't really see what I'm doing. You can only see what the dog is doing, but um, that's all right, because the pet tutor was for the dog. It wasn't for me anyway. Um, and this is the blind that she needs to go to. So there's a, a dead bird where I'm sending her to, um, and um, she needs to go get it. Um, there's a few different little bobbles in there um and the bobbles were actually because of me not because of her i'm i was slow with my um instruction <laughs> but um but she did the work so um this is the first season test that she was entered in this year um so you see the dog has to be steady they're off leash um she has very good obedience, which makes some things easy. And then because her obedience is so good, it also takes her down a little. So she can smell the ducks. That's what all that head bobbing is. She can smell where they are. Well, and I, I don't know. So, you didn't get the gunshot volume in there. Yeah, I don't know if you guys can hear that, but he is firing gunshots and the dog is sitting right next to him and it's... She, 
she. It's you. Are you shooting them, Penny? Yeah. Oh, okay. I. Yeah. Yeah, they're they're blanks. They're poppers. Um, but it's a it's a shotgun. Um, yeah. So I don't know if you heard there was a whistle that I used to cast her. I'm trying to get her up the hill. <laughs> that wasn't my dog. <laughs> that was mine. <laughs> and she got the dog. I, I will say that she was this was a small test, you know, because of COVID, there weren't a lot of things going on. Um, but she was uh, one of, there were seven entries. There's not, this is a middle level and there's not always a lot of entries. Um, and there were um, seven and she was only one of two dogs that passed this whole test. So um, that's a good thing. Yeah, so. it's amazing to me that the dog just sits there even when you shoot the gun and it's a loud noise for those of you that have shot a gun before. Um, well, I could show you a video of Otto. He's not sitting. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> he's doing the dance. <laughs> yeah, he, he's a little harder and the training definitely makes a difference as to when, depending on what age you start them. So. Sure. Okay, well, I want to leave plenty of time for the audience to ask questions. Um, sure. Penny, I, do you have any final thoughts? Um, I, I, I don't think so. I, I, you, you guys will probably appreciate this. I was using this in with training with a, a friend who does not train, is not a positively forced in the trainer. Not, a, not hardcore, but they do use an e-collar and, um, you know, that's, that's how they train. And I was putting it out there and getting, getting it ready. And he said to me, what do you do when there's no food there anymore? And my response was, what do you do when you don't have the e-collar on them? Uh -huh. Because when you go to a test, yeah. you know, and I'm not, I'm not pro or against or any of that, but it's the same concept, right? When you go to a test, your dog doesn't have the e-collar on. When I go to the test, my dog doesn't have food. Um, so it's the same concept. And it's actually cheaper than an e-collar. <laughs> um, but it's, you know, it's kind of the same, same concept. Um, cheaper is always an incentive in my mind. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, okay, well, thank you, Penny. Um, this was great information for everyone. Um, for those of you that do want to contact Penny after this, she is in the Pet Tutor Users Group. Um, you can contact her through email. She's also got an Etsy shop, um, sixblackdogsleash.com. Um, there's some really neat stuff on there. I saw some biothane leashes and there's some dog tags, and, um, but definitely take a look at that. Um, we've got some cool stuff. I assume, Penny, you make all that stuff and make yes. it? Yes. Okay. Yep. Yep. Awesome. And we will yeah. move on to questions. Okay. Um, I'm going to stop sharing here, and I think I've seen a couple questions come through already. Um, let me see. So from, uh, uh, Robin, we have, did you start with smaller distances approximations in the water? Oh, good question. <laughs> yes. Yes. So, um, it, depending on the dog you start and depending on what you have available for water, sometimes you don't have a choice. Um, but Sure, and and actually, I'll take a step back to say, you train the way that I'm training with my training partner is we train it on the land and then we take it to the water. If I don't have it on the land, there's no way I can do it on the water. Um, so um, even just even that has to to get done first. So train it on we train it on the land first, teach it on the land because um, it's much easier to teach when you're in, not in water. Um, although both of us have walked into the water if we needed to, um, short distances. Sometimes it's, you know, when you first start off with the puppy that I'm doing with food bowls, it's, you know, 10 yards, um, and then maybe 20 yards and you take the dog with you and you drop it and you come back. So I, absolutely shorter distances. Um, 
And once you get into the water, you do shorter distances also, but it's just not as easy. You might end up dropping bumpers halfway and then, or having the dogs see you drop it. Um, it certainly made it easier to work on distances with the pet tutor because you didn't have to get people involved to, to do that. Once she realized that there was food there, she was pretty motivated to, to, to go the next time. But yeah, you always start off short. Okay. Um, and then Alicia, I don't know if you have a preference on this, Penny. Alicia is asking if you have a preference on size of the pet tutor, like the original versus our shorty, um, five cup versus three cup. Does it matter to you at all? I don't know the small one, so I would say not. I think I asked you guys about that, and you said it wasn't really that much of a difference, and weight-wise, it wasn't that much of a difference. Yeah, weight-wise, it definitely isn't much difference. It's a little bit shorter, um, holds three cups instead of five cups from the original. Yeah, I mean, I never put in five cups of food anyway. That's that's way too heavy for, for what I need to do. Yeah. Um, uh, no, but you know, if you want to put, put it on a wish list, um, a thinner one would be awesome for field work. That would just kind of like line right up with the pole. Just saying. We've noted it, Penny. Thank you. <laughs> um, uh, let's see here. Um, Wes, you might answer this question better than Penny, but um, what remote do you use to deliver the treat from 80 yards away? So I think maybe Penny's got a special remote. Well, yeah, uh, so you got your microphone on so I can just yeah. talk here. Uh, yeah, the, uh, uh, sorry, I came in here with Nick. The, uh, the remote, the standard smart clicker, um, line of sight, outdoors, um, if it's held so that you're not covering the antenna, that's one of the tricks, is it's 500 feet. And we've got that pretty consistent. What Penny was running into though was she was going through weeds and uh, any foliage, it uh, will diminish the signal. So it is our standard high power, long range Bluetooth. Nothing special about that in that sense. All that we did for Penny was mount it. That's all that we did was mount it so it was upside down because the, uh, the antenna, it tends to be when you hold the, the standard smart clicker, it gets down in the palm of your hand. Yeah. If you wrap your hand around it, it kills the signal. Right. Now that's no, normally not a big problem because it only diminish, doesn't actually stop the signal, it just reduces it. But right. Penny was going for, going for broke. She wanted to get the max range so this palming it like that wouldn't give it the max range. That's all we did was flip it upside down and we put some new uh, uh, extended batteries on it so the batteries would last longer for her in the field. But, yeah, yeah, if you hadn't done that, my husband was my kid. <laughs> Is that in the store, Wes? Uh, the, the standard uh, smart clicker is, we're actually, because of the involvement with Penny, uh, we have a prototype, a new prototype we've not introduced yet, which does exactly what we did for Penny. It is a, we kind of uh, did a, a, a little quick uh, prototype for her, but we've just produced a new version of the remote, which is coming to the store. Uh, for long range applications like Penny's uh, and for other applications where, the stand, where they want something a little different. Um, but uh, I hope that answered the question. Definitely, I think so. Um, Penny, another question, we'll move back to you. Lots of questions, I love it. Um, Robin is asking, do you have any recommendations on books or videos for um, to learn more maybe or to get involved? Um, um, about field training or? Um, great question, I don't, I guess either or. Um, yeah, probably field. Yeah, field training would work or hunt test. Um, there are some. I know there's a couple Facebook groups, um, and there's there's one that's local in meaning the states, and then there's a a UK one that I think I just joined. Um, there's a couple books out that aren't necessarily positive reinforcement training, but they're books that give you 
alternatives to how you would train something. Um, can't remember the name of that either. I want to say Cassandra somebody. Um, but if somebody wants to email me, I can, I can tell them the name of that book. So it's not a positive reinforcement training book, but it is a good book in the sense of that it gives different drill work and it tells you about, oh, you, you can also do it this way. So it's not just about using, you know, how to use the collar. Um, and I know there's one, I haven't looked at it yet. I bought it um, from the Windrose Kennels, who's another guy that was doing a lot of positive reinforcement training stuff i think he originally was from the uk and now he's here um i could be wrong on that also but i have all of those names and if somebody wanted to if you want to just email them to you i can i can get it to you um or if there's a group way i can get it nick maybe i can just pass it on and we can do it that way i don't know yeah, oh. definitely. Um, I can put your email in the uh, chat here for everyone. Yeah, somebody just wrote Wild Rose. That's it. Wild Rose kind of. What did I say? Wind, wind Rose. <laughs> Wild Rose. <laughs> That's close. Yeah. Mike Stewart. Um, Amanda is asking, do you work with the pet tutor with the marker on or off? I'm assuming, Amanda, that uh, marker sound. The tone. The sound yeah. Oh, the tone. Yeah. Um, I use it. A good question. On for the most part. So when I first started using it, I would make sure that there was food in it before I sent her. But I also would about halfway or three quarters of the way hit it again so that she could either hear the tone or better yet, because she's a Labrador, she hears the food falling into the dish. That is what she's hearing. <laughs> she doesn't really care about that tone. <laughs> she, but she hears the, the, you know, food sounds like when it drops into a dish. Um, to, and I did that on purpose to sort of just get her moving faster right towards the end. Um, call it what you will, a little bit of a bribe, but it was also just a little bit of a incentive to say, hey, don't forget, there's food there at the end. Um, so um, I do use it. I actually think it's the food falling in that really is more resident for her, you know. Okay, um, thank you. I never remember to turn the tone on or off. That would be like just one more thing I'd have to think about, so. Yeah, yeah. And I use a clicker, so she is used to sound, so. Okay, good, thank you. Uh, Penny, before uh, Nick reads the next question, I just wanted to jump in because I saw somebody was asking about beta testing and uh, we're always looking for beta testers. You were actually one of our early, early beta testers. Am um, I gonna lose my job? Uh, no, never, Penny, no, <laughs> no, we got more stuff coming. So uh, if you are interested in doing that or wanna know about this remote that I mentioned that'll be coming out uh, before long, uh, support at pettutor.biz, just say, you know, what you're interested in beta testing, and uh, we'll put your name on a list as one of our uh, uh, beta testers. That's all. Um, I see Joe has recommended uh, Joe Lauren R Plus Gun Dog Book. Um, so she's got the link there for that. It looks like Force Free Gun Dog Training Fundamentals, maybe is the book title. Um, so for those who's the, who's the author on that one? Um, Joe Lawrence. That's an older book, I think. Or is it? Joe, if you'd like to comment on that, you can unmute yourself too, if you are comfortable doing that. Joe, like in Joe man name or Joe, like in Joe woman name? J-O, so I'm assuming woman. Okay. I don't want to make Yeah, I, I'm probably not. I don't think it's the book I'm thinking of then. Um, and then Charlie is saying retrieving for all occasions is a great R plus resource. Building a retriever drills and more. By yep, I, yep, I've seen some of that. Yep. Um, and I can put that for everyone. Thank you, Charlie, for that as well. Um, does anybody have any last minute questions? Feel free to unmute yourself as well. I think I've given you guys all that permission now. So 
you should be able to some, unmute yourself. I think someone asked if uh, the app itself would give the same distance as the smart clicker. And uh, the answer would be, they are different. So, and, and it's probably phone dependent, but it's more like a hundred feet for the phone versus 500 feet at uh, the top for the smart clicker. That, yeah, that's right. Some phones up to 200 feet, but yeah, nothing, nothing close to the uh, 500 range without the smart clicker. Yeah, for, I mean, for me, I would find that horribly um, yeah. awkward to try to be looking at my phone while I'm trying to see what my dog is doing. So for me, the clicker, um, and especially how you did it so that I can hold it the correct way easily, um, is much that's much easier for for me i i i don't ever use the phone app for anything actually okay just my personal preference yeah uh, yeah training next to a pond with my phone would yeah. make me nervous <laughs> <laughs> yeah <laughs> okay guys so since it is five o'clock i don't want to keep penny here all night um penny i do have one more question which i'm actually intrigued too um why you didn't use the pet tutor to work on the left and right directionals because um, i don't have three of them <laughs> <laughs> um I, I could um but i i i didn't really have problems with teaching the rights and the lefts and the, the casting piece of it um it was building that long range distance for the blind and once i was able to do that the other stuff, the castings on the left and the right seem to come a little bit easier for her. Um, I do kind of do a modified version of it, which is um, sometimes I'll, for the first time, first round, I, when I put the piles out, I will put food on, on the dokens or the bumper so that when she goes, she does find food. But that, that's only the first time. Um, but it was building the the long distance that I that I needed the pet tutor for because the casting is just directional to try to get them onto the line or going in the right direction. If you're really casting for a hundred yards, your dog's really off. <laughs> There's something really wrong. <laughs> so, um, at least for me, anyway. So. Um, so if anyone wants to donate to the Penny Baker Fund for yeah. two new pet <laughs> tutors. <laughs> I certainly, certainly use it because normally when I start to teach that, I'm teaching it with three different fo three fo food bowls. Um, sure. So if I had three, I would use three. But. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you, Penny, very much for everything. Um, sure. I really hope you all enjoyed this.